They'll be fine. Okay, thank you. They will. <laughs> we'll real. I am positive. And did everybody have a chance to look at the minutes from November? It was looking at the minutes that caused me to realize that we were missing some things on the agenda today, so it's handy. You'll see this as kind of a hybrid set of minutes. I did some when I was secretary. Travis added some when he was secretary, so this is a split level. <laughs> it's really, yeah. Teamwork. Teamwork, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Give people a chance to look at them. We'll entertain a motion from Barb's hand is up. The table, Barb, yes. Um, again, Lowe's trying to get into this is Barb. Lowe's trying to get into the meeting. I emailed her the link. Um, but she I don't know if Jacob, if you could. Um, I'm just texting her, just emailed it. See if she'll see if she's gonna come in. Is she using a different email address? Because I sent it to lowcroft4d at yahoo.com. That should be it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's the right one that she said to do. And I just emailed it too. So um it's almost like we need to start at 520 to make sure we get everybody <laughs> in on time. Do we have a call-in capacity here? We do, but I'm going to resend it to her. Okay. She's texting me back. I'll let you know what she says. Yeah, we're waiting. Do we need to have her? I'll entertain a motion while we're waiting on the minutes. Okay. Not very entertaining. <laughs> I did the last one. I was waiting for someone else. Oh, okay. Nancy's waiting for somebody else to make a motion. What do we want? Where are we making a motion? Is that a motion to approve the law? Oh, Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, this is Barb. She got it. Um, you want to wait for her? Maybe she wants to approve it. No, but she says, I'm on another Zoom meeting and hope to join uh, the Library Advisory Board. I'll be it late, but so I think we should just continue okay. uh, now that she has it. But the camera is just on Denali, um, as nice as she looks. Um, but <laughs> it's 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 about your screen. Actually, You're going to have to because we're seeing a screen that shows that Christy. all three people are being shown. That's Christy. so it has to do with the way that you're uh -huh. you're. Okay, I apologize. Up. It's okay. Yeah. See if I can find more it's actual a screen view. versus. There's a way that it zooms in yeah. on like the center yeah. person, and yeah. you have to like double tap it to like zoom out. So I'm waiting for a second. I'll second. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What about Doug? It's second then. Doug seconded already. No, it's good. We can do Denali. Yeah. We'll do Denali. Okay. It's a double second. Then <laughs> seconded. Any opposition to this motion? Okay. Well then, we have a director's report, Judy. Thank you. Uh, welcome everyone, uh, and I welcome the new members. I apologize that I wasn't here for your first meeting, but it was just, I know I I had to get away for a few days. So I, I think I was in Texas that night, yeah. And uh, I just wanna welcome all of you um, to the board, and I know that all of you will bring new perspective and interesting perspectives to us. Uh, I have several things. Um, uh, we sent my report, but um, I, I wanted to also talk about some other things. Today, we had our first senior um, golden days, we're calling it, uh, and it was in the Ann Stevens room. It's very lovely. We had about 13 seniors that came, uh, and I want to especially thank uh, Menica and the adult services for helping with that, James Curran, who was helping from Muldoon they, and Jan Hardy. They kind of had started a book club for seniors at the assisted living homes in Muldoon. And so one of my goals and the mayor's goals was to work more with a lot of the seniors who we feel like have been isolated during this last couple of years. We were really looking uh, for seniors that maybe uh, don't have much family 
they live alone. These were not people that were insisted living, even though we did have somebody from the New Maple Hills there today. Uh, but our goal is to try to welcome people back in. Uh, I have worked with the Anchor Rides and the Senior Center, Tabitha and Rebecca at the Senior Center, so that we can go pick them up and take them home. And they uh, and we all the anchor rides will be if we need somebody that's handicapped because the other uh, doesn't have it. But we had uh, a wonderful little kind of uh, luncheon for them today. They really enjoyed it. Vera Cruz, who I happen to know a long time in her 90s, we do have a grand piano in the Ann Stevens room, and she sat down and started playing. Uh, I hope to be able to play a piano at 90. I think she's 94. Um, and she played beautifully. Uh, not for very long, but she did. And then we had someone else that was there that sat down and played some Christmas carols for us. It was really nice. And I always like to tell Vera Cruz's story. She dated Dick Clark when she was in college. <laughs> and she said he was just too short, but had she known it, was gonna be, <laughs> had she not even going to be so famous, oh, she yeah. most certainly would have stayed with him. But that she's a lovely woman. So it was very good. And then uh, Minica, they went over the, showing them. A lot of them had been in here even since we remodeled. And so she went over things that we offer, uh, you know, like larger book, uh, larger print books if someone needs them. Uh, she showed them uh, um, how uh, some of the little, uh, what are you, the little my players that you just actually, it's on a book and you just put earphone, it's the books on it. You put earphones in it and you can play it. Uh, a lot of the audio books, maybe perhaps they would like to have an audio book. So she did a great uh, little presentation on different things that they may not be aware of that are kind of newer in the library. And um, then she did a little brief, uh, just kind of a little uh, a tour of the third floor, since that's where the adults and the adult uh, services are. And all the new books are on the second floor. So she took them down there too. So they just all, I, I got Alice Hanley was there. who's a dear friend of mine. Most of you know Alice. And she thanked me. She just said she was so, uh, she was just so pleased to do it. She brought a friend several. So we have a feeling, we did let them know that we're going to try to do this once a month. Uh, I'm looking for uh, Rick Henderson, who is our rental person here. We're going to have a movie theater one afternoon. Uh, and he's got an old reel of that old reel movies. And we've got some old movies down in the vault. So we hope to do that, maybe a World War You'll have to come World War II movie or one or something. But anyway, so they were just very excited. And, and we know that that number will grow after today. And it was a terribly cold day for people to get out. So yeah. anyway, we we're really excited about that. Uh, and then the, um, um, the other thing that I wanted to report uh, in my um, uh, report was uh, we did hire... Um, an appraiser, um, Melissa Faust, um, we looked all over the state. She's the only one that does rare books and pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of art here that has been donated, and otherwise it has not been appraised. We have uh, we have 17 pictures in the gallery outside of the Ann Stevens room, which about, and about five or six original Sidney Lawrence oil paintings. And so um, she, as I've asked her in phase one, to go through and appraise what we think is the most valuable. She'd been down a couple of times and looked. We went down again the other day uh, and looked at some things. We found some older maps and stuff. And uh, we really need to know what we have. Come to find out when I came here, we do not have any of it appraised or under insurance. So um, that is something that I'm working on. She said looking at just that 17, she was sure it was between two and three hundred thousand dollars worth of art there. And then when we went down into the um, the vault that you guys are going to see tonight, they um, we found an original Byron Bird, bird saw down there, done in 1977, because of the pipeline. And uh, there were uh, all everything. Uh, Sarah Prescott, who is our Alaska librarian, has worked so hard. Believe me, she's only been here a couple of years, and it's not been taken care of for a long time, and well, certainly since 2017 when the flood happened. And so she got everything up on racks where you guys can look through the pictures. I'm not a real artsy person, but so she would see something, recognize the name, and she had a little camera, and she wrote me back. She took a picture of a map that was in a frame, and she was so excited. She said, I just looked this up, and she said, one just sold uh, in Lords of London for $15,000. I went... Hmm. So we just need to kind of know what we have. 
because we can't keep everything. We're going to have to start, you know, uh, doing uh, have auction, do something else with what we've got. But before we do that, I think we need to know what it is we have in a, a value and what we want to keep. Then a decision to make. Well, we keep or not. Huh? Audit of what you. We well, yeah, audit. We have a lot of things are cataloged, but a lot of things were donated, and so uh, they weren't they weren't uh, actually cataloged as good as the other things. We have. I talked to Bruce. He used to work here. He said we had at least five hundred thousand dollars worth of rare books. So. so we've got a lot of money sitting around here that's not appraised. And my, one of my goals, the mayor's, is that we're going to find out what it is that we have. We're going to try to get appraisals on the most expensive things. We're not going to, you know. And then go from there on what we would like to do with it. So I'm really excited about that uh, because I've been working with Le Melissa. She actually grew up in Seward. Her mother owned a uh, an art uh, art art studio or art um, gallery there. And uh, like I said, there's only two people in the state that are certified to do the rare the art like that. And she's the only one that does books and art. So anyway, I just exciting that we kind of got that started after many years of sitting there. And I'm really excited to see. I think people would like to know some of the stuff we've got, you know, really maybe do a, a thing of what's here. So that's basically my um, I'll let him talk about the bookmobile. Uh, but that's basically. Um, um, there was one other thing in my report, which was it was the. Um, uh, oh, and we had the. Uh, 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 the children's Bible story started back at the Lusak Library this week at 1030. We're still having our ongoing um, uh, uh, toddlers um, story times. And I mean, they're just, they're so cute. They're, they're little guys. And we have a really good turnout in those new services. So, and there's also a uh, community, uh, um, our new services is working again with the mayor's community engagement, and they're having a winter wonderland event for children on the 29th at Lusac from 3.30 to 5.30. And they've been working, Elizabeth and, and Portia have been working really hard on that. So if you've got any kids to come, please, please make that a good turnout. Uh, and then um, I, think that's, I think that's all I've got right now. So, okay, thank you. Thank you, Judy. If you have any um, questions, let me know. So, questions for Judy before we go on? I was, I was going to talk about the bookmobile now. Uh, yeah, I, had, I know. I was going to oh. for questions first. Is okay. there somebody on screen that wants? Does Barb have her hand raised? I can't yes. Guess. Barb? I, I also have it on the computer. I don't know if that is showing up. Yeah, we see it. There's okay. It, this, this question is for Judy. Thank you for your report. Um, I, I read in the report that you wrote, and I'm unable to um, actually quote it completely, but it basically it was at, it was saying uh, something about keeping um, uh, in line with Mayor Bronson's goals for the library. And I was yes. wondering if the Library Advisory Board had a copy of those goals that you're talking about. They're we almost finished. We have some broad generals, but you will get a copy as soon as they're done. He did give some goals when the budget was done, but he is working on those, and I will give you a copy as soon as um, as he gets it done. Thank you. Great, thanks. Anything else for Judy? Okay, Jacob. Uh, okay. So... The day after our last uh, library advisory board meeting, I contacted the state library and the grants administrator told us that we uh, received the grant for $80,000 for the library bookmobile. I'm um, sorry, what was that number? 80,000. Excellent, thanks. Um, that doesn't cover the entire expense. The library still needs to pay for the van and um, we'll have to pay for um, some of the materials out of our own budget. Um, for that, but we pay monthly on that, don't we? Uh, when we pay, it's when we pay for it. It's not like a lump yeah. sum, but it's a, a monthly expense. Um, the thing that we're a little concerned about is that the grant report is due by the end of uh, October of next year, and we're not expected to get the van until the end of June. Yeah, and it's going to take at least a month to install. The lift gate and the the accessories, and then it's going to take another month or so for them to install the shelving and the wrap on the outside of it. So that puts us at about you know August, you know maybe September, 
which is cutting it close to have maybe a month, maybe a month and a half of service before we finish the, the, the grant report. So I've talked to the grants administrator for the state, and she said that she thinks that they might be able to um, extend our report by a month or two. Um, so we're also looking into possibly purchasing a van that is maybe a year or two used so that we could get it sooner than a brand new van. Um, so we're still working with fleet on that. And I and one of the things that I talked with Brendan and them is that, uh, and, and Jacob also, is that we need to be sure that we have everything ready to go that we possibly can order so that when it gets here, we're not waiting back ordered on something that we need to have as much as we can. The only thing we couldn't do on that would be the, the lift and they'll only let it do a couple of, of like a month, Jacob said like a month or so out. So, but we're gonna try to really be ready on top of it so that when we get it, we can immediately start installing it. I would so be surprised if the money van would be late anyway because of all the oh yeah I'm surprised that's if we get it so the the money will be um, appropriated it at the assembly one of the assembly meetings in January so filled out all that information but it still has to be appropriated any questions for Jacob so I'm just curious this is a library bookmobile you guys are purchasing a, a van. Mm -hmm. We're going to make we're going to kind of make our own bookmobile. We're right. going to take a, a Ford Transit van with an extended cab. And we found, you know, I basically did a bunch of research and found out what the components were that most of the companies that make bookmobiles buy. Uh -huh. And then we're just going to buy them ourselves and we're okay. going to hire local people to install it. Very cool. Should have a bell like an ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much, Jacob. Anything else? Um, okay, uh, Denali, you're up on the agenda. So while she's doing that, do we have a guest? Yes. We were just looking at that. Yes. We do. We have that. Kim Hayes. The page from the foundation. Yes, yeah, so it looks that way. Oh. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> which is fine. Yeah, I just didn't didn't know who KH was. There she is. There she is. Thank you. Oh, hello. I also see an MG. Do you guys see the MG? No. 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 And and now we have DT. No. Okay, so DT is That's Denali. Denali. But okay. who? M, M who? We don't see it. Yeah, I do not. I see eight. That's Alice. Can you guys see that on um, online? Yes. Sure can. Did oh. you put this together? I did, yes. <laughs> you are. Wow, okay. You got to work. <laughs> she got to work to me. She will be my teen hire. <laughs> All right, uh, good evening. My name is Denali Chewbacca. Uh, at our last meeting, I and some members of the public brought up some concerns um, about inappropriate literature in the youth and teen section. And I researched and investigated these concerns further. And I was a, a little appalled at some of the things I found. Um, I took note, I have a running list of some of the books and things I found. I also uh, took a couple examples, some excerpts and pictures of the books, and I put them together here. And while I was doing research, I was also doing my best to come up with um, solutions so that these aren't concerns and problems people have in the future. So I wanted to include a little bit of a trigger warning because I did not censor anything. Everything I listed on these slides is exactly how they appear in the books. The only thing I changed is that I abridged things for the sake of the presentation. So in the teen underground, um, in the teen underground, the age range is 12 to 18. So while I'm presenting about the teen underground, I'd like everyone to think of a 12 year old they know, like your grandson or a niece or a nephew. I personally have a 12 year old brother. So while I was going through these books, I was thinking, would I be okay with Joseph reading this? So the first thing that caught my eye about this book is that right here, this boy has a picture of a penis right there on his head which is supposed to indicate that this is something that he thinks about often, it's a priority for him. And I just don't think that's right for young people to be reading about. So 
I took a couple excerpts from this book. The first one, um, you, you can see it's pretty dirty. It ends with, I hold on for dear life as he expertly brings us to the most mind-blowing simultaneous climax in the history of gay sex. This is just by page three. I actually stopped reading this book after page three because the first three pages were full of sexual fantasies, interactions, and descriptions of experiences that were as repulsive of this as this or worse. So I actually stopped. And I was thinking I definitely would not want Joseph to read this. Second, Blood Moon by Lucy Cuffew. So what caught my eye about this book at first was when I saw it on the spine, I was like, oh, this sounds like a vampire werewolf book. I pulled it off. Um, I didn't understand what that image was until I read the inside summary of the book. That is a picture of a girl on her period. Here's some excerpts from that. Blushing fact. Apparently, it's not just your cheeks the blood rushes to when you're embarrassed. It's your lady lips, too. She nods at my crotch and grins. That's on page 15. So this book does address um, a social, the social dilemma of menstrual shaming, which is still common in our culture. I have no problem with the author addressing this. The problem is, is she doesn't get to it until over halfway through the book. The first half of the book, as you can see all the way up to page 137, is full of uh, lewd conversations, like the excerpt from page 15, really graphic depictions of this girl having sex with the boy she likes, along with things she says to him, things she fantasizes about, mentions to her friends. It's just deeply disturbing. Third book, The Key to You and Me by J. Robin Brown. I don't know if it's loaded up there yet, but can you guys see that? No. 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 <clears throat> Computer hates me today. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on here, but I did have some excerpts from that. It's called The Key to You and Me by J. Robin Brown. One excerpt is Lou of the dreamy lips and the dreamy hips. She put her hand on my boob. It felt so good, but so weird. Page 242. It was hard for him to get it inside me. And then when he did, it was sort of push, push, grunt, grunt, uh, page 298. Page 330, pages 328 to 330 describe a lesbian sexual encounter. On page 330, one of them asks the other, did you? Her expression is bemused. Oh my God, I did. This is referring to climaxing. So these are the kinds of books that are in the teen section. These are present in the teen section. And as a teen, I can tell you, I definitely am not okay with this being in the section for kids my age. I was very disturbed by it. And the fact that those books are there say to me, this is what we think you like to read. This is what entertains you. This is what you identify with. Um, while there may be some teens who definitely identify with those kinds of stereo scenarios, I can guarantee you, I'm not one of them. Most of us aren't. That kind of literature is not good for us. We're already going through intense hormonal changes, body changes, books full of hypersexualization and graphic depictions like that aren't healthy for us to be reading, especially if there's 12 year olds going to that section. Um, my next slide is an image of a book in German. The title is Close Up. I'll just so you, you guys can, can share your screen and share it again. Okay. We'll probably refresh it. Happens when you least want it. I know. It's working so well today when you're most prepared. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it looks like it may have lost me out or something. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so this is an image of a book I found not technically in the teen section, but in the foreign languages section. So the way that the teen underground is set up is on the third floor, when you walk all the way down to the end, on the left, there's one double-sided bookshelf. On the right, there's another double-sided bookshelf. Those are full of teen books. And then the bookshelf rows keep continuing from there. So the first time I went to the teen section, I did a full 180 degree turn to check out, check out the shelf behind me. And I pulled this book off the shelf. So 
I was a little confused because I was like, why is this in the teen section? And then I realized it's actually the foreign language section. But the fact that there's a book like this in such close proximity to teen sections, I thought was a little inappropriate, actually very inappropriate, especially because there's a lot of language immersion programs in Anchorage. I personally don't speak a lick of German, but I have a friend who is in a German immersion program for six years. And even though he hasn't been in it for five, he still speaks German fluently. So he could probably read this book as if it were in English. And if you imagine, he stopped that program when he was 12. So with that 12 year old <clears throat> age range, you could have those like that age group coming in, picking these kinds of books up off the shelf and reading them. Clearly, this is not the kind of book you want a child to be reading. This is a comparison that I found. So the two books on the right are same content kind of book, same storyline, but they're in the adult section. The one on the left, like you can compare that and see the one on the teen section is clearly more visually lewd than the ones in the adult section, which makes one wonder why is it closer to the teen section than it is to the adult section, especially when it's so easy to just turn around and grab it off the shelf. Inappropriate literature and youth service services. So when I was going through it, I found dozen, a dozen books probably, but these are some of the ones I decided to include. I personally don't really have a problem with LGBTQ literature in the library. I just wanna say that now. I, I recognize that that's a large demographic in Anchorage, and I think that it's fine for them to have literature um, for that part of their identity. What I think is a problem is exposing young children to the concept of sexuality. I think that if there's college classes for 20 something year olds who live this through high school in their teenage years, and they have professors breaking down this concept for them, four year old kids who can't put together two plus two should not be exposed to a subject so complex and confusing. I don't think it's right and I think it also kind of takes away the innocence that makes them a kid. So um, it froze again, but I did have some solutions that I came up with. So parents and older teens, I think could get a lot more involved. I read in the collection management policy that librarians are responsible for screening books and putting them on shelves. And if someone has a problem with a book, they can file a report or a complaint, and then that book will be re reviewed, removed, left on, et cetera, et cetera, it's a whole process. I think that the library could release a list of the newly received books on their website that they get. And parents and older teens should be able to review that list, like not all of it, obviously, but maybe like four or five books a person. They could review that list and then they can fill out a short two minute survey about whether or not this book should be allowed. Is it inappropriate? Is it too graphic? What age range do you think is best for it? that kind of thing that would, A, it would give the public um, the opportunity to speak their minds before a book is placed. So instead of 50 kids reading a book before it gets reported, it gets reported before it's on the shelf and those kids don't have to get exposed to it at all. So that could help the public feel heard. B, it would allow the librarians to have physical statistical information and data about what the public wants and doesn't want with books. And that would in turn decrease the amount of what a lot of people would consider to be inappropriate literature. It would also um, help the teens because over time, as they start seeing trends in what we want and what we don't want, we'll be able to mold that section of the library more to what fits our needs and our desires um, book wise. I would also recommend moving LGBTQ plus literature into its own section, both in the teen area and in the kids area, just because there's a lot of, in the teen books, there's a lot of, lot of graphic depictions. It's pretty intense. And so I'd recommend just moving it off the shelf, especially if it's inappropriate, into its own section and then designating that section 16 plus, because some of the content I was reading was definitely at least rated R and that's 17 plus. So, I would recommend moving those. I would do the same in the youth services. I'd pull the LGBTQ plus literature off the shelves, put them on their own shelf and label it LGBTQ plus literature for kids. And that way it's easier for parents to say, I want you to go check out those books. I want you to see what it's like for people who have to live that way under that kind of scrutiny. I want you to understand that lifestyle. I want you to find who you are. They can tell their kid to go get that. Conversely, a parent can also say, I don't want you reading that. Please stay away from it. In any case, People are still included. No one's discriminated against. 
they still get to read that kind of literature, but we're also not unnecessarily exposing kids who shouldn't be reading that yet because their parents don't want to by sneaking um, one of those books in between if you give a moose a muffin at all the places you'll go. I would also recommend moving the books with the graphic scenes, whether in foreign languages or not, into the adult section to limit teen exposure. The very hypersexualized books especially, doesn't matter if it's for LGBTQ or for hetero, if it's super graphic, it should be moved to the adult section, period. I would also recommend redesignating the teen section to be 15 to 16 plus and creating a preteen section for ages 11 to 14, because that way it'll, it'll make it easier for kids my brother's age to find books that fit them, like Diary of a Wimpy Kid or The 39 Clues, and kids my age would be able to find books that are more suitable to us, like Lord of the Rings, that sort of thing. I would also fix some of the displays. A lot of the teen underground displays represent one perspective. There's only one perspective of books and then the rest are neutral. Um, when I say neutral, I mean fantasy books, dystopians, that kind of thing. They don't really take a side on a particularly political or controversial subject, they're just there. So I'd recommend putting up equal displays. For example, hetero romances next to LGBTQ romances, socialist books next to capitalist books. So we can demonstrate inclusivity. Everybody's heard, everybody's present. Um, I read in the collection management policy that books are not taken off or not put on the shelves if they correlate with a certain political party, a certain idea. It doesn't matter if they're offensive. The collection management policy states that they are allowed to be displayed and put on the shelves. And I think that we should see that through, especially when it comes to displaying things, because those are the books that catch your eye first. Most of the books that I put here were on display. They weren't hidden in the shelves. I would also recommend there's a display cart on the second floor. If you go up the stairs and look to the left, there's a display cart with books on it. And it's right outside of the youth services room. And I think that display cart should be moved because there are books, new arrivals that go to the teen section and the adult section. I don't think it makes much sense for kids to not be allowed in those sections, yet they're allowed to see the books that are in those sections. It just doesn't click with me. So I'm recommending that we move that more center left. There's a clock on the wall more towards the center of the new arrival section. We could move the cart there. That way the kids aren't seeing it as they walk past and people who wanna check it out still can. Or only display neutral books, like I was saying, Babysitter's Club, 39 Clues, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, because those kinds of books, kids typically go, no color, no cartoon, and their eyes bounce and they walk on. Parents don't have to worry about shielding them because there's nothing inappropriate or nothing they don't want them to see on the title. It would be a really good, I think, center road for people. And then lastly, I would like to recommend adding different kinds of content to the teen section. Most teens won't go to the fiction section because they think it's boring or too hard to read. I think that's a really negative mindset. I know for a fact teens are capable of reading Anna Karenina and War and Peace if they put their minds to it. I think that a lot of the teen section, from what I saw, was full of junk, what I like to call junk food reading. So it's essentially TV in books. There's not much of a plot. There's not much character development. All the vocabulary is something you're familiar with. You're not expanding your horizons. You're just reading things that you're familiar with. It's kind of like just rereading the same book over and over. You're not growing in any way. So I would recommend adding classical literature to that section within you know, the appropriate parameters. For example, Madame Bovary is a classic, but it can get a little bit graphic. Anna Karenina is essentially the exact same story, just less inappropriate. And we don't have to put the super thick version of the books in that section. We can put the graphic novels. Like I know there's a graphic novel of the Odyssey. And I know that there's abridged versions of other classical books. So instead of 617 pages, you're reading 300. And that way we can broaden people's parameters. We could see um, increasing mm -hmm. reading levels of hundreds of teens. Test scores would go up. Literary rates would go up. Writing skills would go up. It's Reading and good books are the foundation of basically being learned. You can't really get anywhere if you don't know how to read and write very well. You have to be at least proficient at it. And the best way to do that is to make sure people are getting books that challenge them to think critically, that force them to use context clues, and make them put things together on their own. So that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for listening. And does anyone have any questions I can answer? Uh, Denali, mm -hmm. the, the the German book. Yeah, I'm I'm curious because the author has an awful English 
Anglo-Saxon type name? Is it retranslated into German? Do you know? Do you know? I, it, you may not be able to tell, but that book in German, the author, well, the title's in English, and the author has an English name. I think that's the translator. It's the uh, trans oh, it's a translator. Okay, it's never mind. Yeah. or whatever. I, I can't, okay, good enough. Yeah, Danielle, may I may I just may I speak? Um, first, I'm going to speak. Oh, uh, first of all, um, thank you so much. As you know, I dreaded this. Uh, as the head librarian, I was accused last night by Chris Constant of uh, throwing, uh, taking books off the shelves and throwing them in the garbage. That most certainly has not happened. I've had some complaints from parents and I have pulled some books from the library uh, to look at them. Uh, there weren't any of these books and there wasn't one that I know that uh, uh, Deb, you had mentioned um, that because there were some on here that have been brought to my attention that were not mentioned that I really do think we need to take a look at. Um, and I think we had excerpts from them. But, it, you know, and Jacob saw those. And I told Jacob, I said, you know, Jacob, I don't have any problems. With I believe they were in the adult sections anyway. They were not in our children's section. So we put them back on the shelves. And so um, the last thing a librarian wants to, to do is take on the issue of any type of censoring. Uh, and I happen to know librarians very well, and you even mentioned that word, and they are going to come unglued. Now, I've done that because I've been an educator for many, many years, and I've worked with librarians. So I want to thank you, number one, for giving a, a report that is absolutely excellent. I cannot believe a teenager did, let me tell you. I hope you grow up and become a librarian, number one. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, library science, get that degree. Uh, and I just want to thank you that you also went through having solutions which were you wanted to be inclusive of others. You wanted to think that you're not asking any of these to be removed. You're asking us to take a look at where they are. And I think that is just an excellent way of looking at things is that, you know, can we make some changes? Because I'm sure you it's coming. I mean, I've had several calls and people are looking. And I think if we're proactive, you know, and someone comes to us, we'll say, well, no, we've, you know, we've done this. We've taken a look. And and I and I do think there are some objectionable things in the library in the children's sections. What the book? Uh, oh, that was Sammy. Oh, that was Sammy. And and it. I mean, I've read some of it, and we did not have it though. It was checked out, and I think it was in our adult section. So I did check in that, and I said, no, it is not in our children's section. So that prepares me and all the other librarians if we know about this and we we are proactive instead of reacting when a group comes ready to blow the library up and, and their parents are getting to that point. Yeah. And so I just thank you so much for doing such a great presentation and then coming up with solutions that to me make a lot of sense, but I'd like to hear what others say, because it is an issue that we're going to address, if not in the really near future, uh, pretty pretty soon out. Yeah. Did, you, did you have a... I, actually, Denali, tell us about your education here in town. What, what schools did you attend? Um, so when I first moved up here in 2019, I was homeschooled online for the spring semester. And then fall of 2019, I went to Polaris K through 12. And then, uh, you know, pandemic hit that spring of 2020. And so I finished out my year with Polaris. And then I started with ANSEP, which is... Um, the Alaska Native Science and Engineering Program at UAA, Great. and I'll be finishing up my senior year with them uh, this spring. You're an impressive young lady. Yes, you are. I mean, that's, yes. And that's an understatement. Thank yeah, you. that is an yeah, understatement. I'm an educator, so, <laughs> and I actually teach uh, the Ignite Kids at Polaris. Oh, cool. Her mother went to Polaris. Yeah, wonderful. You know, I, so I impressive. Have, I have one more question. Mm -hmm. With some of the content in this, these books, to me, it looks Basically, I mean, do we have a section for erotica? Because that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. That's what you. That's what some of your stuff's reading. That's what I take it as. I, or am I wrong? I, in that interpretation. I don't. I'm not aware of any sections for erotica. I do know when I came with my brother for the first time, he pulled a couple books off the shelf and he looked at me and this was his face. Well, that, yeah. He was like, "Are you serious?" I was like, "I know." He was like, "This is literally soft porn." I was like, "Yeah." He was like, this is really bad. Why is this here? I was like, I know. He's like, you got to change this. I was like, I'm going to try. But yeah. So yeah, a lot of the stuff I saw was basically erotica stuff. And I didn't see a section for that, um, at least in the teen section, which it shouldn't even be there in the first place. But 
I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Thank you. I think it does. Anything else? Do we have questions from the the online folk? I can't see that very well. Bar, bar. Bar, bar, bar. I can see Barb. You're you're muted, Barb. You're on mute. <laughs> it's like the comedy shows. Um, <laughs> thank you, Denali. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, it was definitely a well um, uh, laid out presentation. I think we do have a process, and I think we all should remember that there is a process for ordering books, putting books on shelves, for dealing with any complaints about specific books. And I think uh, as as Jacob sent out the um, the process for the collection and to remember that the library is a place where you may find books that you do not like but it's not to say that we should be taking any of these books down because they have gone through a process to become part of our library collection and i think we have to be careful when we talk about it because certainly everybody has a different point of view about what information should be available or not but the whole point as judy said was not to censor information somebody might need the kind of information that might be offensive to another person um, and that's what the library as opposed to another type maybe a school library would be more constrictive than a public library for a city so it's my it's i don't it's not really a question it's just a comment yeah, I totally agree. I'm super against censorship. I think it's a violation of the First Amendment rights, and I think that's really dangerous when you start getting into violating your constitutional rights, which is why I recommended more like more like reorganizing it, sort of, not taking things down or completely removing them, just re like organizing it so that people are more aware of what they're getting into and maybe resetting the age parameters a bit more so that rated R stuff isn't getting picked up by 12 year olds, basically. But I agree with you, I don't believe in censorship. Barbara, may I also respond to that fact that uh, I did talk to our collections um, librarian and um, because I had read through some files of complaints, I think my only issue that I have is there is no public participation of any collections and I think there should be. Uh, that's just my opinion and I and all the complaints are looked at by three librarians and I do not think that is a fair way to look at it I think it should be parents that help I don't think it should just be three librarians sorry they are going to tend to think more alike than maybe I would as a parent and so what I like about Denali's solution is is that it, it's a lot of things that we can do with very little attempt if everybody will be open-minded and i'm going to tell you there's going to be some people on staff that aren't going to be open-minded to listen know that for a fact so because i've approached it and i was it was not so i just i want us to all be respectful and look at this because i think it could solve a lot of problems that i think we're going to start getting and i don't like it i'm an elementary teacher for 40 years and a principal and that stuff should not be in a children's section i'm sorry it shouldn't I, I have a comment too. This is Doug Wyman, and I'm currently a, a teacher with the Anchorage School District, and we are having similar issues um, with books that are in public or, or you know in public schools. So, Barbara, you made a comment that that you know that books you know may be offensive here in, in the public library. That we're, we're having the same issues, you know, locally in, in even in our elementary schools. In fact, we just. Uh, had a book that was reviewed and removed by our superintendent. So this is a national um, challenge that we have. I think figuring out what's what's appropriate, and what's not appropriate. That's it. This is Depra. I, I, I tend to agree with most of what's said here. I don't think the book should be tossed, but I think we should look at where you place some of these books, especially if the content and, you know, some context is going to have maybe a little erotic passages here and there, or is that the main theme of the book? Is that the main theme of the book? And that's going to be more of an objective, subjective view, I guess. But that's my take on it. Who knows? So, so this is Deb. Um, there is a vast difference between a 12-year-old and an 18-year-old. 
Um, so I actually that sub the the division between your ages I think makes a lot of sense. From I'm yeah. saying twelve to eighteen, that's huge. Um, so that seems like a good middle ground. Yeah, um, if I can say something. First of all, <laughs> outstanding presentation. And the fact that you're here being proactive, I mean, it's hard to disagree with a lot of what's been said here. Obviously, I agree with it. But one thought I would share with everybody, just my thought too, is I understand coming from that young, uh, young perspective, you want to categorize. I, I shouldn't say you want to. From what I hear is we want to categorize things and put things in a certain spot on a shelf and say, okay, you go over here, you go over here, you have this. We don't want to mix and mingle some of these things. And let's just say the, the straight and gay literature. To me, from what I, and don't take this the wrong way, I don't want to come across negatively. What I hear is we're going to put the blacks in the back of the bus and the whites in the front. We're going to have straights over here, we're going to have gays over here. Now, what happens when you have a 14, 15 year old person questioning their sexuality, wanting to get some literature, and they go to the gay only reading section? Everybody in the entire library is going to be, look at this person, this person here is gay. How is that kid going to feel? How is that 14, 15 year old right. kid going to feel? I mean, that's, that's the only like, thought I would share. Other than that, I mean, obviously, I think everybody knows my stance on censorship and the First Amendment, right? Second Amendment, right? Um, so, I mean, but I agree. I mean, as, as a father of, kids and grandkids, I would not want my kids to be reading a lot of that information that's up there. Um, I don't even let them go through my musical playlist for YouTube. So, <laughs> um, so I mean, I, I mean I, I'm totally in agreement with that. I guess I would just say it's about being mindful and careful about how we implement or how, right. you know, reorganization. Right. Maybe like I a, think more than age than anything else. Yeah, yeah maybe well, yeah, more, like more a age like appropriate. plus kind of literature right. with both instead yeah. of um, separating it. And that way people know, okay, this stuff is going to be a lot more explicit right. and this stuff over there. And that way it's a little more, it's a little less um, back and front center. Yeah. yeah. Anything else, Barb? Um, I think that's Travis, uh, is, who just spoke before. Yes, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I don't think we should be, you know, putting people in categories. I also think, like you said, the 14-year-old person looking and questioning sexuality, um, it's very important that they're not um, singled out or isolated into one area where they have to go, kind of like the old video stores where you had triple X movies were in one area. <laughs> um, I also oh, I think those names there. down when they went in there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear that, Judy. Judy, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you just said. I was just joking. I said, oh, I used to write those names down that went in those XX video rooms. <laughs> I, I think it's just really important. I'll just reiterate that it's very important to be careful that we are not making judgments, um, that we do have a process for collecting books, putting books on shelves, and for dealing with any complaints that we have. And I think it's really important that we remember that we are all not going to agree on what books are good for our children or not good for our children. That's the parents' right to decide. Um, but it it doesn't necessarily mean that that parent has the right to take that book off the shelf because they don't want that book for their child, because there might be another parent that does want that book on the shelf for their child. And so I think when we're giving reports or we're talking about that, it's really important not to be... Um, to, to just be fair to everybody. We're all human beings and we have all a lot of differences um, that we need to respect. My two cents. That's good. Anything else? Thank you very much. That You're welcome. Yes, that was nice. Excellent. And yeah. we'll Good job. Yeah. invite you back to do it for the librarians and just see if we can have a discussion about it. Good idea. Um, well, I think we have reached our mission moment, which will be a tour, which as a, as a current member, I think we did this many years ago and all about that saying this was the best meeting ever. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was really exciting. So I'm excited about doing it again. Nancy? Madam Chair, since we have people online that will be able to yeah, join us, I'm wondering yeah. if we should do the comments and adjourn to the 
tour and and yes. Okay. Well, we'll but that good idea. I, I, yes. So I move. So this Nancy is Nancy, moved. and I move that we um, ask for comments and call for an adjournment before the tour, and and then we can leave from the tour. Do I have? That's the first. The second. My second. Thank you, Danielle. You ladies are missing the tour. <laughs> so uh, before we adjourn, are there any um, ending comments to the meeting? Thank you. Thank you very much. Great meeting. Okay. Then. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thanks us. Um, okay, it's been moved and seconded to adjourn this part of the meeting at 630. <laughs> Do you ladies, we need to look at taking some of that food before I tear it down. I'm going to I guess not we will shut, uh, shut down your participation. It's been wonderful seeing you. I will talk to both of you in a little while. Okay. Happy holidays. Stay safe. Warm. Thanks a lot. Stay warm. But I'll read this and then we'll go into a you didn't ask what I was reading. I was prepared. I show and tell. Yeah, by accident. I heard good things about the book. It's in the national meeting. It's, everybody kept talking about it. We did. We talked about using the uh, check in by asking what people were interested in. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, Lo. Hi, Lo. The meeting just ended. I don't know if we're on live anywhere else. Lo, Lo, you're on mute. You're muted. I can't hear you, Lo. You're on mute. Can't hear you. Muted. Sorry. That's okay. I There's was another meeting, and I looked at the time. I went, oh my gosh, I got to get to to the lab meeting. How did it go? Well, wait, wait a second before we start talking. There is someone else on, still online. Um, KH, I don't know. KH, are you here? I have two. Oh. I think I do too. It says MG, which is meeting guest, and then KH. Right. So there's two people. So how about, um, would you guys, um, there are just three of us. Are those two people still on? Anyway, um, I, I think we have to be careful. I guess we're still in the meeting, public meeting, low. Okay, so maybe we should just kind of, I'll just text you. Yeah, you can text, or, yeah, um, that would be good. Um, I think we can, uh, I can fill you in on how the meeting went. And Alice, okay. I don't know, do you want to uh, join us too? Um, but I, I think, we, I don't know how, I, I want to be appropriate as far as open meetings, you know. Yeah, sure that I think we can have three people uh, but I don't know these other people want to join us or what but let's let's end this particular yeah conversation okay okay Merry then, Christmas to you Alice thanks. if I don't talk to you before Merry Christmas yeah. Happy New Year okay Happy New Year all right bye-bye